Okay. Okay. So I'm here now with uh, Israel Broussard, one of the breakout stars of the new <laughs> couple of movie called The Bling Ring. This is a great story. This is a fascinating story about a ring of celebrity obsessed teens who break into celebrities' homes and steal whatever they can. And you are the lone. There are all these gorgeous young women and one guy. You're the one guy. It's based on a true story. Talk to me about how this kind of ring came to pass and how you, among all these girlfriends, how you got involved. Not you, your character, got involved. Um, all right. Well, in a nutshell, basically, there's these uh, Calabasas privileged teenagers um, that, I guess, got a little bored with their life and took things to the next, le next level. And uh, they rob homes like Paris Hilton's home, Lindsay Lohan, uh, Adrena Patridge, and Orlando Bloom. And they just went into their house and they just wore their clothes and went through their closet and, you know, talked to their pets and whatnot. So <laughs> um, my character, Mark, he... Uh, he goes to this new school, and uh, he was homeschooled before, so he doesn't have any friends, and he's really looking for acceptance. And uh, he finds it in this uh, girl, Rebecca, uh, Katie Chang's character. and uh, The you ringleader. Know, the ringleader, yes. You're sort of her chump? I, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, pretty much. I'm the puppy dog of the film. Yeah. Um, but no, she just kind of takes uh, him under her wing, and you know, peer pressure comes in, and then uh, they start robbing houses. And... Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the story in a nutshell. Okay, so your your character is based on a real guy. All these people have real life counterparts. Yes. Did you ever get to meet the guy that your character is based on? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I'm glad. However, yeah. I'm not opposed to meeting him. All right, let's let's not get that wrong. It's yeah. just uh, before filming, it was important to me that I didn't, just so I could uh, really stick to what Sophia wanted. Okay. I felt like if I met the the real guy, Nick Prugo is his name. Um, I felt like that would have maybe distracted me or maybe I, you know, kind of don't want to stay true to his actual life. So, you know, if I met him now, it, it'd be all right. Maybe a little awkward. Uh, <laughs> but do you think, what do you, okay, this is a movie about kids, basically your age, having sort of obsessions with celebrities. What do you think his take on you and your performance of him would be? After all, there's a big Hollywood movie <laughs> about him. Well, yeah, I think that's the part that would be awkward if we met because uh, did I did I you know give justice to to him? Yeah, was I uh, playing his his character the way it was? Um, I don't know. You know, if I like I said, I've, I haven't met him yet, so I yeah. I really don't know what he's like or how he is. Uh, and I don't know if my character came even close to what he's really like. So okay, I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear his his thoughts on it. So we talked a bit about the fact that you're you're about the same age. I mean, you're an awfully young guy. How old are you? I'm 18. And how old was he when he was pulling this stuff off? Uh, they are still in high school. These kids? Yeah, they were still in high school. I'm yeah. gonna say 16 to 17. Okay. I don't think 18 yet. So can you? How did you get inside this guy's head? Do you th could you personally relate to him? Can you do you yourself have a celebrity obsession or get this idea? Wow, that would be cool if I could do this or that. Well, I don't really have a celebrity uh, obsession, and I was never into fashion or anything like that. But uh, my character is very insecure, uh, very very low self confidence, and I I kind of related to that. Okay. Um, yeah, growing up, uh, I, I'm from Mississippi. And uh, elementary school was pretty hard for me. So that's where I kind of tapped into the character. And I had to do a lot of research for fashion. And I had to learn how to wear heels. Um, <laughs> yeah, you might as well explain that. You made a couple of references. Why, why did you make the reference to you're not into fashion and you weren't used to wearing heels? Uh, well, because this movie is based around fashion. I mean, we're, we're in these homes stealing Balenciaga, Louis Vuitton, you know. So that was very important that I had to know all the all the names for that. Actually, uh, Dior, the brand I used to call Dois, and in the, <laughs> in the table read, like I I said my line and I said Dois, and everybody just stops and looks at me like what? So, <laughs> and then there's a scene where I have to where I have to walk in heels, uh, and yeah, because I, your character seems to be. Quite taken with fashion. I mean, that's how yeah. that's how he kind of related to these other girls in the in the show. I mean, he 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 also had a a, a flair for fashion and, and taste along this similar lines, right? Right. And the interesting thing about Sophia and the way she works and the way she uh, films and directs, uh, she really doesn't impose an opinion on you. You know, you got to create that yourself. And she doesn't try and explain anything. It's all just 
you know, whatever your take is from the film is what you bring home, you know. So if okay. you think if you think my character swings this way, then he swings that way. If you think he swings this way, then he swings that way. It's that's that's the brilliance of Sofia Coppola. And, okay. Um, yeah, I was very comfortable, uh, you know, pretty much putting my reputation in her hands and <laughs> trusting her with it, and uh, she did an amazing job. Okay. So now the the big question is this is a, this is a very kind of a through the looking glass kind of um, movie for a lot of people because this is a movie that is itself seemingly obsessed with the very things that its characters are obsessed with. It's sort of like a movie about itself in a lot of ways. One of the great moments, and again, this is in the trailer, so I'm not giving anything away, is when when Katie Cheng's character, uh, the ringleader, is being told that, well, all the uh, celebrities have been informed that we've now caught, you know, you burglar types, and she said... Really? Well, what did Paris say? I mean, she's fascinated. I mean, maybe it's Lindsay. What did yeah. Lindsay say? It's they're so fascinated with this notion of celebrity that even though they were breaking the law and robbing these very celebrities, they were so taken with it. Does that? Do you feel? And this is a movie more. Uh, this is a question more for the director, maybe uh, Sophia, than you. But I'm just want your reflection on it. Do you think that the movie might be suffering from the same? thing that these kids were suffering from, which is to somehow spotlight and highlight the glamour of these celebrities' lives. Well, I think, again, uh, Sophia doesn't really impose an opinion on you. Uh, I think social media is definitely a part of our society these days, and uh, when there's social media, that means everybody's more collect uh, connected to these celebrities. So, yeah. You know, Paris tweets, "Hey, I'm I'm having a hot dog at Pink's." You know, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, I've been to Pink's," uh, and they automatically feel like, "Hey, you know, we know each other because we've been to Pink's." Yeah. Um, and another thing you've got to realize is these kids weren't thinking of, "Hey, let's go rob Paris Hilton." They were thinking, "Hey, let's go to Paris's house and chill." You know, they yeah. wanted to they wanted to be Paris. They wanted to be Lindsay Lohan. Um, and really, they were just in the moment. They were just pumped with adrenaline and. You know, I'm not saying what they did was right at all. I'm just saying I understand uh, where, where and why they were going with Do it. Do you think what they did was pretty cool, on some level at least? On some level, yeah. I mean, they legit <laughs> took it to the next level, and you've got to kind of appreciate that. Um, but it's it's just like, I don't know. They they did something new. They did something out of the box, and yeah, they got in trouble for it, of course. Yeah. But, uh you know, they, they took the risk. Well, they don't seem to be suffering too much of the consequence. Now, I understand your character. Now, again, I don't know where the real where their real lives are, but according to the movie, your character and Katie Chang's character, the two the two sort of that the movie focuses on, at least initially, got four years in prison. Are they still in prison? Are they serving those times, or did they get shortened? Um, Rachel Lee, who uh, Katie portrays, is uh, she's like completely on the DL. Um, I think she's out and on probation, but I'm not sure. Um, as far as my character, uh, Nick Prugo, he got out the 28th of April. Um, actually, this uh, year? This year. So, <laughs> just in time for the premiere. <laughs> yeah. So, I was, when I saw that, I was a little. Uh, uh, <laughs> he knows how to break into people's homes. Be right. careful, right? Um, yeah. So, I, I think, I think. They're all out of jail, and definitely Tess and Alexis. They yeah. they got off easy. Like. Yes, they did. Well, in fact, that's one of the ironies of the movie is at the end, the the Emma Watson character. We'll have to talk about Emma Watson, but Emma, Emma Watson's character is just she's already you know plotting her next her next step up the celebrity yeah. you know fame ladder. Do you think that these kids got off? Too easily, too harshly. If you were, if you were, you have to put yourself. I know you're an 18 year old kid, so. You, but if you, if you could be the societal judge to determine how they should be punished, do you think they got what they deserved? Not enough. Too little. Well, it's too more. Too it's much. hard to. It's hard to answer that because we don't know exactly what happened. Okay. For all we know, um, this article uh, from Vanity, Vanity Fair. Fair. Uh, what Nick Prugo said could be a bunch of you know BS. I see. Um, so. <laughs> Say his story is true? No, they they should be in jail with him. They should. <laughs> what is this? This is treason. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, they got off way too easy. If this yeah. is if this is what happened, but since we don't know, it's kind of hard to answer that. So you're a kid from Mississippi. You tell me. Uh, you are playing a teen obsessed, you know, kid from California. Basically, do you? I mean, I just saw a picture of you guys all at the Cannes Film Festival. I mean, you are living that celebrity life that your character would kill for. How does that make you feel? Do you do you feel like, I mean, I assume you want to become an actor. You actually want to make this your lifestyle. How do you feel about becoming a celebrity? Is it something that you yearn for or are nervous about? Well, a little of both. I mean, okay. I uh, 
I don't know. I came up from a good upbringing. I had I have very good parents, and I've got a very level head. So hopefully, I can stay humble uh, throughout my entire <laughs> career. Um, but no, it's nice, and it's it's definitely all new to me. You know, going to to Cannes, uh, walking the red carpet there, wearing Prada, like <laughs> it's it's all very new, and it's it's very exciting. But at the same time, I you know it took a, a lot of hard work to get here, and I. I didn't cheat my way anywhere, so yeah, I'm I'm very very excited. I'm very proud of the movie. So how did how did you prep for uh, what you had? I mean, clearly this was a very different kind of lifestyle for you <laughs> that you were then acting out. How did you prep for? It? Did you read teen magazines? Did you watch shows? Or uh, we watched a lot of reality TV. And actually, uh, Sophia told me to watch Fashion Police, and so she sent me <laughs> DVDs of all the Fashion Police. And so you know how to say Dior. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I know how to say Dior. Um, but yeah, I met with uh, Sophia's acting coach, Greta Seacat, and she really helped me uh, kind of dissect the script. And that, you know, meeting with her helped me out a lot. Um, and then, of course, learning to walk in heels. We did a little fashion shows. We did a mock break in uh, with, you know, the whole group. And uh, they knew we were coming, but pretty yeah. much one Friday night, we went up to Hollywood Hills and broke into one of Sophia's friends' house. <laughs> and this was before we started filming. So okay. we're, we're all, you know, going up and being sneaky and trying to pretty much Jason Bourne this. And <laughs> next thing you know, uh, Thaisa finds the window that's open, and then Claire climbs in. She falls. We laugh. And then like we forgot we were actually robbing a place, and we were just <laughs> having fun and grabbing the stuff that was on the list. So we really got in the moment that last uh, that last day of pre-production when we broke into that house, because that's what these kids were doing, is they weren't going in there trying to be all sneaky and steal stuff. They went in there to have fun. And So, uh, so how was that moment? Kind of thrilling? Uh, yeah, it, it was. It was something new. You know, it was, uh, we were still getting used to everybody. We were still getting uh, in the groove of how everybody was. So, uh, you know, definitely with Emma with us. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy, you know. It's so like, tell me about, so Emma Emma Watson, I mean, she's as big a celebrity at your age that, you know, there is. I mean, for, for all the uh, Harry Potter uh, coverage, you couldn't be a bigger celebrity. What was that like actually ha- working Sort of, you're kind of mocking celebrities and endorsing <laughs> celebrities at the same time while you were actually acting with, there was a celebrity in your midst. What was that like? Uh, that was a lot of fun. Emma's a very sweet girl. She's very smart, too. Um, oh, what is that? I think that's a fire alarm. Don't worry. Someone's just oh. robbing us. Oh, worry. I, I, yeah. I think it goes, <laughs> that, happens, that happens like once a week. I think we're okay. All so. right. The, the annual prank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so back to Emma. Um... No, it was funny. One day we were filming on Venice Beach, and you know it's a scene where we're selling a bunch of handbags for you know fifty bucks. Yeah. Um, and as we're leaving that set, you know, one person says, "Oh my gosh, it's Emma Watson!" And then the paparazzi comes, and then next thing you know, we have to mob out of there. <laughs> and that kind of gave us a perspective of what it's like to be a celebrity because we were in the middle of it, and even though they weren't after us, they were after Emma. Yeah. We still kind of got the feel, and like it's claustrophobic. Like everybody's like, "Oh my God, it's Emma!" and I get it, you know, you want, you're excited to see Emma. It's Emma Watson, but at the same time, you know, geez, give her some space. You know, we are human. We need to breathe. Okay, but so if you're an actor with her, you probably grew up with the Harry Potter movies. You've probably seen them all, right? Did, no. no, really? No. You, I've seen, you didn't know who she was, huh? I've seen a couple clips of Harry Potter, but I've not seen one full Harry Potter wow. movie. Wow. I know. You are, wow, that's, that's excellent. <laughs> so actually, so Emma meant nothing more to you than Katie Chang did. Well, I knew who she was. Okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, that was, that was a little intimidating. But, uh, no, I felt like the fact that I hadn't seen it, uh, I didn't have to... This role is different from Harry Potter for Emma. This is a very diverse very. role. And uh, I, I was glad I hadn't seen it because, you know, y- you see Harry Potter and then you meet Emma Watson and you think, oh, my gosh, I know you from Harry Potter. Right. But I don't know her from any- anywhere. So I'm just meeting her as a person <laughs> and watching her work in this uh, very unusual role for her. But it seems so normal. Um, and she she had to do more work than all of us to get here, definitely with her dialect, um, the yeah. LA slang and whatnot. So. She probably found you refreshing that you're the one person <laughs> in America that doesn't doesn't flock to her. Well, I haven't asked, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So I was so you didn't like sit down and say, So what was it like, you know, at doing yeah. the Harry Potter movies? That was that was that's great. Another thing that I want to ask you about, apparently, so Paris Hilton, like, you know, Kirsten Dunst, I mean she she appears in the movie in a fleeting moment. But 
she was one of the main victims of your bling ring, yeah. and apparently, I've I've read that she that house that you break into really is her house. Those yeah. are really her things that you're going through yeah. and hanging out in. So, did you have any contact with her specifically, uh, Paris Hilton, or just her stuff? Well, I had met her uh, when we were doing the cameo scene. Uh, I met her. I said hi. Sophie introduced us. Uh, a little nervous uh, on that one because I knew who Paris Hilton was. <laughs> <laughs> More than Emma Watson. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, I met her that day, and then she lent us her house. And uh, everything you see in the Paris scene, that's all her stuff. That's There was not one thing added. There was stuff moved around from room to room, but okay. that is all you know, her stuff. Don't you think it's a little odd that Paris Hilton has Paris Hilton pillows in her own <laughs> room? Well, I mean, since... You know, she was in Cannes and she was at the premiere, so I've talked to her a little bit. And uh, oh, great! Those pillows were actually a gift. She's got a very, <laughs> very good sense of humor about herself, um, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, she she's actually very smart and intellectual, so she's not uh, she's not this ditzy girl that she puts herself out to be. You know, that's of course what makes her money. So by all means, go for it. Ah, so it's sort um, of self satire. Yeah. So okay. you know, she's she's actually a, a pretty pretty awesome woman. You know. Huh. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for her because, you know, the fact that she had people just invade her privacy like this and then have a film crew come and invade her privacy all over <laughs> yeah. again doing the same thing. I mean, right. that's got to be tough, but she, she handled it like a pro, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of respect in for that. Yeah, well, that's good. So now that, you, I mean, you've actually gotten close to a couple of celebrities now. We all have this <laughs> this ha- distance <laughs> view. No, I'm serious, though. I mean, you, you are on, on speaking terms with Emma Watson, as big as they get for a certain age group, <laughs> and Paris Hilton, as big as they get again for a different age group. Uh, do you think of celebrity in any different way than before you were cast in this movie? When you're just this, you know, up and coming star from the, you know, Mississippi. I don't, I don't think of them any different. I, I feel like I have a better understanding for them. Um, but you know, the way I see it is, I, I'm a very private person. I, I I need my privacy. I need to get away and breathe. Good um, luck. Yeah. <laughs> so I I. I like to respect, you know, celebrities' privacy, which is why I wasn't, like, bombarding Emma with questions or Paris <laughs> right. with questions. You know, they get it all the time, and they're yeah. so used to it, and they're probably so sick of it. And, you know, I know I'm going to be if it ever happens to me. Um, but, no, I just – I want people to respect my privacy, so I respect others. And Fair enough. That's kind of how I, how I roll with it. So in the film notes, I know Katie uh, is feeling under the weather, so she's not here. But yeah. it's said that one of the things when they were doing all these tests that you two seem to have a real chemistry. Can you explain what it was – about her or the two of you that really seem to click? Because you play somebody who nobody knows, and she, for some reason, gloms on to you. I don't know why in real life or personally, but what is it about that connection that you and Katie seem to have? I don't know. You know, when we first met, it was for the chemistry read um, before we booked it, and I think we were both nervous, so it kind of <laughs> helped play it out. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I can't, I can't tell you where the chemistry comes from. I yeah. think that's just, you know, Katie's an amazing woman, and her and I are actually almost polar opposite she's a school <laughs> i'm gonna go home from work and do my homework you know yeah um and how that means you or how i am <laughs> i am gonna go home and relax there ain't nothing <laughs> nothing gonna be happening with any type of work um, I see. Yeah. <laughs> so i don't know katie and i are really good friends now and and we've we've had this relationship for about a year now and it's been fun you know she's she's an awesome girl and i'm, I'm glad there is chemistry and uh i think sophia did a good job uh, picking her, and I'm glad we we got booked together because you know there's times where you do a chemistry read with this woman, but yeah. next thing you know, uh, one person's hired yeah. and the next one's not, and so she hired us as a as a duo, and I, I like that. So, and as directors go, Sofia Coppola is is something of a celebrity. She does a lot of a uh, younger uh, movies. I mean, uh, Virgin Suicide is one of my daughter's you know favorite films and books and the like, and uh, the, the Lost in Translation. She's dealing with a younger woman with uh, with uh, Bill Murray. How did you relate to her? I mean, she's. I mean, considering you're so young, I mean, she really is an, an older generation, I suppose. But how was she as an actor for your generation, your your age group? Um, or was the well, age irrelevant? I, to me, the age was irrelevant. Okay. Um, I really liked her her view on things. She really, her movies, especially somewhere you can it, you can really notice it's. She brings out like the the edginess in life and the, the boring stuff in life and the stuff that people think about all the time, but they, they never talk about it. They never, they never show. And, you know, this movie was definitely different from her other ones. Um, mm-hmm. But 
she just she gets the moments and and that's i think what i related to her about because i, I you know i analyze everything i spend a lot of my time thinking is that right and yeah. so i'm thinking of the perfect <laughs> moment and she's sitting here getting it on camera and uh i think that's where her and i kind of clicked uh because we had that similarity yeah that's great and then my final question so is this your first movie i'm not familiar with you have you done a lot of other stuff <laughs> well it's uh this is I think the movie, uh, everybody's been saying, breakout movie. There you go. Um, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but no, I've, I, uh, my first movie was Flipped. Uh, it's oh. a Rob Reiner movie. Yeah. And we filmed that in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and <laughs> that's, a, that's a cute little love story, and that was a lot of fun. Uh-huh. Um, and then I did a, a movie that we shot in New Orleans called The Chaperone. It was a WWE film. Uh, huh. Stephen Herrick directed that. So this is my, uh, this is my third film. Yeah, wow. But this is definitely the one that I, I could really sink my teeth into yeah. and grasp a hold of. And so, I mean, you're awfully young. You already have three movies under your belt. Final question is, what's on the horizon? Do you already have projects lined up? Are you waiting to see how this uh, bling ring uh, settles uh, down first? What's uh, up? Well, yes, I'm finishing up the bling ring press. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to finish one thing and then go on to the next. Um, but no, actually, I've got, a, I've got a music video for the band M83 coming out uh, ah. for their song Claudia Lewis. And, uh, yeah, it's with Lily Collins. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard directed it. Wow. Um, and as far as films go, I've got a great team behind me, and I'm a very patient person, so we're not looking for the next one. We're looking for the right one. <laughs> and when that comes, we've got it in the bag. You sound like a pro already. Have you moved? <laughs> Are you based in L.A. these days now? For the most part. I yeah. can't stay anywhere for too long. I get bored with places easy. I need a break. <laughs> um, so I, I travel a lot. I, I go back home to Mississippi, and I go up to South Dakota, but L.A. is... Yeah. Is starting to be home. Is so, right? <laughs> yes. Well, it sounds like you're going to fit right in. Uh, great meeting you. Anything I didn't ask you, you think I should have? Anything you wanted to say about the movie? Uh, so I got go plenty see it. of great stuff. Yeah, go it's... see it. Yeah. <laughs> it opens uh, this Friday here in uh, Seattle. Actually, so. actually, I've got to correct you on oh. that one. It opens the 21st, so next Friday. Oh, a week from Friday. Okay, yes, very good. Did I get that correct? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, it's the you know New York and L.A. opening on uh, Friday, so I gotcha. We gotta uh, wait a little longer. Did you, did you enjoy your uh, Seattle, Seattle International Film Festival? Uh, oh my visit god! Last night, you know, <laughs> the Seattle International Film Festival is amazing. The Sounders are amazing. That was really? my first professional soccer game, and I had a oh, blast. You, you went to the game, I yeah, with a packed game. house. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. But now I'm kind of bummed. I can't go to any other game because it's not going to be as exciting as that. I'm going to expect so much more, and it's <laughs> yeah, it's going to be that's nothing. Right. The LA Galaxy they have a great team, but they don't have the great fans like we do up here. But you, yeah. you should uh, seek them out. Too, so. Oh, I'm going to. Very <laughs> cool. Well, I'm glad you had a chance to see a little uh, Seattle. You actually yeah. had decent weather, too. Oh, yes. I've been loving it up here. <laughs> Welcome to Seattle, Israel. Nice <laughs> meeting you. you. Nice meeting you as well.